Let's see if this time it works. Yay! Hello, YouTube. Oh my gosh, I had such a scare because I um, I pushed my little go live now, and the little wheel was like re 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 re, and um, I didn't know whether or not we were going to be able to connect or not. But welcome, happy Wednesday. Hello, Valerie. I am so glad you made it. And you know what? At least you're going to be here for the first thirty minutes, and that's exciting because today is my. I'm calling it my pilot episode because I'm going to be changing things up. I absolutely love doing my lives. It's something that I really, really, really enjoy doing. And I was sitting there the other day and I was thinking about, you know, I always said when I'm getting ready in the mornings and I'm like, what do I want to talk to YouTube about today? What do I want to share? What do I want to, what, you know, what part of my life do I want to talk to them about? You know, what new things do I see? And I was sitting there and I was like brushing my teeth or doing something. And I'm like, honey, why don't you just talk to them every day? So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to be coming on live every Monday through Friday um, from 9 to 10. And I'm going to treat it kind of like um, my own little morning show. And I'm super excited because I have all sorts of ideas. I have all sorts of plans and we are going to do it in a manner to where you can totally, um, you know, you can jump on, you can participate. If you don't want to participate, you can sit back and listen. And, um, Ooh, Connie, hello. Welcome. This is the second time you've made my live and I'm super excited about that. And, yeah, Valerie, I am so excited about that because I, you know, I had to go pick up Robert yesterday at, um, yeah, I know you made it. I had to go pick up Robert yesterday at LAX and I thought about this in the morning and hello, Linda. And I had like, oh my gosh, it was so the traffic was just horrendous yesterday. So I had like three hours to drive in my car by myself just to start the thinking. And I came up with some ideas. And we're going to go over my ideas today and kind of give you a little layout about what you can expect Monday through Friday. So I'm calling um, my morning show, show uh, Gray Hair Can Do. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I started um, like a couple of videos where I was just showing that I can do things over 50 at 57, I think it was when I started that, um, that I can do things just because I'm 58 now doesn't mean I can't do things. So I'm going to call my little morning show um, Gray Hair Can Do because I want to always just have that message of regardless as to what age you are there's nothing, nothing is going to stop you, but you. So it's called again, I've said it like 12 times, but I'm super excited. I'm going to call it gray hair can do. Now it's going to be Monday through Friday, um, at 9 AM Pacific standard time. And I'm going to record and I'm going to be live for a part, you know, an hour. That's it from nine to 10. I, I want to be consistent and I want to just, you know, have that, um, I don't know. I, I love going live, but it was kind of like you just never knew when I was going to be live. So it's going to be Monday through Friday, 9 to 10. Now we're going to have, see, I wrote my little list out. That's what I'm reading. But we're going to have some different subjects that we're going to be talking about. And I'm not going to just limit it to this subjects, but basically just to kind of give you the context of what we're going to be covering on in the mornings is of course we're going to be talking about beauty like um like new products new things i find um just kind of just kind of like i don't know beauty skincare that kind of stuff of course we're going to be talking about fashion and today i am i decided to go way outside of my comfort zone again with my outfit and I just have to show you my top because look at this cute little top I got and you can see my, my, my belly and I'm never comfortable showing my stomach. I don't know why, but I decided today with the launch of our, um, I know, isn't this cute? I'll put the link down below when we're done, but look at, I'm getting like all blushing and that doesn't happen very often. 
But I wanted to, you know, with this new venture, I wanted to really push my my boundaries of what I'm wearing because I've had this in my closet for a couple of weeks and I haven't given myself permission to wear it because I've just been, um, I've just been holding myself back. And I'm like, Lonnie, you can't be super adventurous and start this new project and still holding yourself back in certain areas of your life. So I wore my top that um, I've been, um, that I've been wanting to wear. So I wore it today on our launching of gray hair can do. Linda says, you really suit that top. It shows off your arm tattoos really well. Thank you. Yeah, no, I really like it. And it's so weird. It's like I wear tank tops all the time. And then once I, I have a, like a different style top, like either this halter top or like even my strapless top. And I get all like, ah, my shoulders are weird or, or I don't know. It, again, it's our inner dialogue that we tell ourselves. And there's really no difference between this top and a tank top. It's just, again, it's what I you tell yourself before you get ready. So we're going to be talking about fashion and we're just going to like show cool things that are coming up and trending. For example, tomorrow I am going to be go and we're going shopping at H&M tomorrow. And I'm going to record that because I've been on their website a lot lately and I'm really struggling with the things that I'm seeing. And they're getting back to their, remember last year, um, they had like all those really poofy kind of pioneer floral dresses. And I'm seeing a lot of that again. And I'm like, wow, is it me? Is it what I'm seeing on their website? So tomorrow we're, I'm going to grab my GoPro and we're going to go shopping at H&M tomorrow. And I'm going to see if the things that I'm seeing online really looks like that in their store. So, and I'm not going to go in there bashing. I'm not that kind of creator. I'm not going to be in there going like, oh my God, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But I am going to go in there and I'm going to give a truthful, honest opinion about what I'm seeing. Connie says, you have such a cute figure. You look great in that top. I have a large belly after three kids, some weight gain. So I wear just um, a bit of flowery top, flowier tops. You know, I totally get it because um, this top right here, one of the things I really liked about it, Connie, was the simple fact that it it, it wasn't really constricting around my waist. See, it, it it's structured up on top, but then down below, it's it moves with me. And I bought a pair of pants from Zara, which fit and yeah and you know what and truthfully Connie I do gravitate more towards tops that are not constricting around my waist and that's one of the ways that I hide the areas that I'm not super um thrilled about because I did the other day I, I if you I did it like a little baby doll top the other day and then even that white top the strapless one um flowed out also um, yeah, Connie, totally you could. And here's the thing. It's, it's like, I have my own issues with my own weight, with my own body type. I mean, I put on a pair of pants and in my mind, I think they're going to look one way. And in reality, I look, I look at myself and, and I look like I'm shoving myself into my pants. And today, for example, I bought a really cute pair of like culotte kind of denim pants from Zara and they fit, but I'm like, wow, you know what? I actually could go up a size. And then I'm like, no, Lonnie, you know what? These are going to be kind of like your, um, your catalyst of where you want your weight to be, because I would love to be eight pounds lighter. I mean, that's my comfort weight. So Again, what I kind of digressed on what I was talking about, but I wear a lot of clothes that hide the areas that I'm not comfortable with. I wear flowier tops. I wear, um, I don't wear things stuffed in very often. So I've learned through picking my outfits, how to pick something that flatters the areas that I like and kind of, um, 
minimizes the areas that I don't like. That's what I was, that's what I was trying to say. So tomorrow we are going to H&M and I'm going to be doing some investigative reporting slash shopping there. Another subject that we're going to be talking about every once in a while is tattoos. And not only the tattoos as like, um, like my tattoos or why I got them or the stories behind them, but just kind of like tattoos in general, you know, tattoos in age, tattoos, um, you know, aftercare, just if you have like any questions about them. If you're thinking about a tattoo, one thing I used to do on TikTok that was a lot of fun is that I would give suggestions on designing tattoos. And so people would be like, hey, you know what? I want a tattoo that represents this, but I don't really know what I want. And I would give them su some suggestions on that. So we're going to be covering tattoos kind of like that. You know, for example, did you know that eye watches don't read your skin very well if you have a tattoo? Which I did not find out until after I finished my arm because I had my eye watch and it read, you know, like my, all of my heart rate, it, it, it stayed connected. And once I got this tattoo right here, my eye watch constantly disconnects. It's like, it just can't connect to my skin the same way. So we'll talk about fun stuff like that. And, you know, that's again, just one of the many subjects we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about age. Um, I decided, Connie said, I decided to be more serious about intermittent, intermittent fasting. I have eaten too much sugar lately. Looking forward to all the upcoming videos about fashion and tattoos. Thank you, Connie. And you know what? I going back to the weight thing, which we can associate with the next um, subject that we're going to be talking about is age. But I have noticed, and here's just again, my journey, but I have noticed that I have lost a couple of pounds once I shifted my energy and once I was like, got out of that mindset of like, Ugh, I'm never going to be able to do this. You know, this is just the way it is. This is so difficult. Once I switched that mindset of like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to eat differently. I'm going to be more active. I'm going to drink more water. It's actually, I have seen some adjustment in that. So we're going to talk about like things like that, like age and um, the stigmas that go with age. And here's the thing that kicks that. Um, how is the B6 going? Linda, you know what? Um, I actually, <laughs> okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Sometimes I'm a little, um, gosh, what's the word I'm trying to say? I'm a little influenced by social media. All right. And what I saw on TikTok was this thing where it's like, hey, you know what? If you start a vitamin or supplement re regimen, you're probably lacking in those vitamins and those supplements. So take a bunch of it until your stomach hurts. And then you know that you've reached your amount. It sounds silly saying it out loud. And so I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to take like a grip load of magnesium and multivitamins. And I actually ended up giving myself a really bad stomach ache. So for days, so what I've done is I stopped taking them for a while and I just started again. But the B6, B12, the multivitamin and the magnesium have, I, I've seen a shift in my energy level. Um, I'm not too sure if it's the vitamins or just my mental way of thinking, but either way, I find myself way more active. You know, Indy and I are going for longer walks, so definitely keep it up. And it takes like 30 days for things like that to really kick in, but I'll keep you all updated on my vitamin supplemental supplement journey. And I, I promise I won't like take like a bunch of them and then not be able to take them for a couple of days. Like I said, sometimes I'm a little like, well, if you see it on TikTok, it must be real. And then, you know what, the last thing that we're, we're going to be touching on is just life, life in general. You mean life, I mean like life stories, like, you know, the struggles of life. Um, I'm very, very um, open and honest about my life. I've had a very difficult path. I've been um, sober now for, I think, going on nine years. And all those other years were just dark and dreary. And, you know, we'll talk about things like that. We'll talk about life in general. 
Um, Nadia says, I loved your podcast with your son about the effects of alcohol. Yeah. You know what? That was a really, that's a really cl subject close to my heart because I, um, I, I love your, um, I love your realism. Thank you so much, Nadia. Valerie, I'm super excited about this. This is going to be so much fun. Um, I did too. And thank you so much. You're very welcome, Valerie. And you see, here's the thing. It's, it's like, I look back at my own journey and that's the only thing we can do is we can only look back at our own journey. And my own journey is one of growing up in a household with a very volatile um, alcoholic parent. And it was like World War III every single night. I mean, horrendous. And, and I get it. You know what? I'm a child of that. But what I did is I turned around and I did the exact same thing to my children. And you know what? I was an alcoholic. I was volatile. I was this and I was that. So it's been a real kind of tough journey for me to swallow that that pill of knowing that I did to my children what was done to me that I absolutely hated as a child. So it's been a real journey for me. And this is one of the reasons why I am so transparent in my journey is because I want to help other people. You know, if you're out there and you did the same thing, if you had, um, Valerie says, but look at you now, you're amazing. Thank you so much. I mean, and here's the, here's the kicker. And I'm going to tell you right now, between parent to parent, if you're out there, it is super easy to forgive yourself. And it is super hard to forgive yourself for ever hurting your children. And I think that that's one of the biggest ma obstacles that I've had to get over. But I'm getting over it and we are all getting over it. I won't say getting over it, but we're getting past it. I think that's a better word. But we're going to be talking about stuff like that. We're going to be talking about life in, in, in real form. Because you know what? Me coming on here and being like, you know what? Life is just perfect. And here's how I do it. And if you did it too, your life would be perfect. I cannot stand that because you know what? Nobody's life is perfect. And the only thing that does is makes you feel worse about yourself. And I refuse to partake in any of that nonsense. Linda says, I was a binge drinker, but have been sober for 11 years. Very cool. Congratulations, Linda. And I think... Anybody who has struggled with any sort of addiction that is now um, clean and sober, that is our superpower. And I am all about just, I am all about just yelling it from the rooftops of like, hey, you know what? This is where I've been. And this is where I am now. And a lot of times I share it because again, I I want to share those, those moments with you because Social media is a real easy sort of um, kind of like, I don't know, you look at other people's social media pages and everything looks perfect for them because they only put forth what they want you to see. And again, I am that anti kind of influencer who's like, no, 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 babe, this is real. I have my ups and my downs. I have my depressions. I have my struggles, you know, and that is one of the things that is my honor to be able to share with you to be more like, yeah, you know what? She's going through a really bad day, but she's just going to eat some mashed potatoes and watch Netflix all day and tomorrow will be better. And if you're wondering about that, that is my comfort zone or my comfort food. If I'm ever feeling bad, um, like if I'm having a down day, I will make the biggest plate of mashed potatoes and I will eat them and I will always feel better. Um, Connie says, I love the relationship you have with your sons, Lonnie. I made some mistakes, my the mistakes my parents did, but we need to learn to forgive ourselves. Yes, I 100% agree because what I found personally in um, my journey is that the more guilt I carried around about what happened, the harder it was for my kids to move on. You know, if I'm sitting there and I'm constantly like, oh, I am so sorry I did this. I am, you know, I shouldn't have done that. Or let's do this now. It just kind of kept them in that 
that loop of always being stuck in that time period. So I agree 100%, Connie, that forgiving myself has enabled us all to move on in a better fashion, 100%. So another um, thing that we're going to be doing on a daily basis is product review, because I think it's really important for if I try something out and I like it, I'm going to tell you. If I try something out and I don't like it, I'm going to tell you. And right now, any products that I mention on here are not sponsored. So this is absolutely real. And I will tell you 100% right now that if I ever do a sponsored ad, it's um, organic and it's something I really like because you have no idea. I mean, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn and be like, oh, this and that. But I turn down product placements and products review all day long because I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, you know what? Try this product because they're paying me to tell you that. I'm not going to do it. Just like my transparency in life, I am going to be... Um, I'm going to be just as transparent and just as honest in any products I tell you. Connie says, that was a tough one for me, but a friend finally told me, Connie, you need to forgive ourselves. Absolutely. Self-forgiveness is really hard, but really important. So talking about product reviews, we are going to talk about the um, e.l.f. cleansing balm. Absolutely love it. And I've mentioned it before, but I've never brought it on here. Because I want to show you something. Um, there's a lot of cleansing balms out there. And they're, they are meant to take off your makeup. They're not meant to actually cleanse your face. Did not know that. I was using the cleansing balm as a cleanser. And I wasn't cleaning my face as well as I should have been. So you're going to use your cleansing balm to remove your makeup. And then you're going to use your regular cleanser to wash your face. Now, some cleansing balms are pretty expensive. The True Botanical one was like 50 bucks. And the Neutrogenia one that I tried um, smelled weird. I did not like that. Again, I am sorry, Neutrogenia, but you need to do something about the smell and the consistency of that product. It felt like I was... It felt like I took a candle out of the drawer and I was rubbing it on my face. And truthfully, I don't think it removed the makeup very well. So I'm going to give the Neutrogenia um, cleansing balm like a one. I did not like it. And it was like 11 bucks. So it was still kind of expensive. But the e.l.f. one, you know what? I really like it. And it takes the makeup off amazing. It probably takes it off a little bit better than the true botanical one to tell you the truth. This one is, um, I think it's like maybe $10 and I love it, but it comes with this tiny little applicator. And I'm going to tell you about this applicator because I did not know about why they were sending this, um, until I saw it online. And what it is, is it's basically, you take your little applicator. It's a, like a little paddle and you scoop the product out, scoop, and then you put it in your hands, you rub it together, and you rub it on your face. Because what they want to do is if you scoop it out with your finger, you have germs on your finger. And then you're putting germs in your product. And then it's sitting there and it's growing all day long. And then you're like rubbing it all over your face. So this is just a little bit of a more... Um, it's a little bit more of a sanitary way to remove the product from the jar to rub it all over your face. So I like that. And um, the Neutrogenia one, again, sorry, Neutrogenia, but they didn't have the little paddle. So they were, there's just nothing I liked about that one. Sorry. But there you go. There's your honesty for you. Uh, okay. Another thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about current events. And I am not going to get into any sort of heavy um, discussions on current events. And I am sorry about that. I, I am, I'm not going to get political. I am not going to, um, I, I'm just not going to do that. And the reason that I've always been very, um, non, I, I don't take a real big stand in these things is because I want my channel to be for everybody. All right. Just because you don't agree with my opinion or I don't agree with yours doesn't mean that there isn't messages in here that we all can't benefit from. So when I'm talking about current events, I am going to talk about, you know what, 
just general current events. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into politics or anything like that because it's, it's really sad to say, but politics are just very volatile and super dividing at this point. And I want to bring people more together on a positive message than that. So speaking of current events, we are going to see what is trending on um, YouTube right now. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but you can actually um, search for subjects that are trending. And right now, Ezra Miller is the number one searched um, thing on YouTube. And he's that guy that is playing in The Flash. And I don't know if you follow him or not, or if you listen to Hollywood Gossip, but he's gotten himself into some trouble. And um, his movie just came out, so he's all he's all over the place. And then, um, doo -doo -doo, I guess some guy climbed up a California radio tower holding a free Billy Eilish, Eilish, sign. I don't know what's wrong with her. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, Jennifer Aniston is, um, says she lived with a ghost. Now there's a cool one. I mean, what's your thought? I totally believe in ghosts and spirits and stuff like that. I mean, to me, it's just, I mean, I, I think we're all energy. And when we pass away, our energy just kind of like, I don't know, I, I sometimes I think it sticks around. And so I want to know, if you are comfortable enough, let me know if you think about, um, if you think ghosts are real. I've been looking at gray hair transitions on YouTube since I decided to let my blonde highlights grow out. Um, very cool. Now, here's the thing. It's like, uh, I'm trying to think. When I started letting my hair grow out to go gray, I thought about like dyeing it to kind of hide it. And the lady who did my hair back then, she's like, no, no, it's just going to prolong the process. So I let it grow out for about six months and then I chopped it all off. But I don't think there's any right or wrong way to go grace. Just, you know, just know there's going to be a little bit of an awkward period, but it's definitely worth it. Linda says the flash is not my favorite. Just a guy who goes really fast. Exactly. You know what? Find a single mom who's late picking up her kids from school. And I guarantee you, she's going to be faster than any flash because that was me. It always seemed like I always was like five minutes late picking up my poor kids and I got to their schools faster than any flash. So I absolutely 100% agree with you on that one. Now, um, let's see here. Politics. You know what? Here's the thing, ladies. It's like a lot of the, the trending subjects on YouTube are about sports teams. And I think um, we need more interesting subjects than sport teams because I know nothing about sports. Um, Linda says, I grew my hair out during lockdown and it was um, it was an easier transition. Yeah. You know what? It's actually, um, it's not that hard. You know what? The thing is, it's like, like I said, it, I had a, just a gray stripe going right down the middle of my head for a long time, but you know what? I didn't care because I knew the outcome is where I want it to be. And that pink kind of purple that I put in my hair on Monday it's almost all washed out. I mean, that did not last for long, but that's okay because I really just wanted that temporary color. So it's got a cute little highlight, but I think I'm going to rock my gray for a while. I'm going to get like a darker silver, but I don't know if I'm going to be doing any other colors for the next couple of weeks because you know what? You just never know. All right. Uh, oh, I guess Harry Belafonte passed away. I did not know that. And um, I don't, I didn't know him personally, but that's kind of sad. Uh, let's see here. Um, doo, doo, doo. They're talking about politics and sports, which we are not going to partake in. And then we have more sports and more sports. Oh, you know what? Here's the one. Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter had a baby. And that makes me feel old. <laughs> I remember when Harry Potter came out and I took my kids to the movie theater and uh, he was just a child and now he has a baby. And I think that's really cool because, you know, 
children. Maybe he'll be a good dad. Maybe he'll have like a little itty bitty wizard and, and um, he'll be, he will live happily ever after with his, um, his baby. So that's what's happening on YouTube. Now let's talk TikTok because there's all sorts of stuff going on over there, which I just found out if you are in the dark, like I am, um, I know. I wonder what he called the baby. I don't know. He should have named it Harry, you know, like little Harry Radcliffe, a little combination of him and Harry Potter, or he could just call him Potter. That'd be kind of a cute name. Like, Hey Potter, which could be for a boy or a girl. Um, just on a side note, Lonnie has some cool shirts. I bought the Rosie, the, um, the Riveter tank. Oh, that's so cool. You know, here's the thing. It's, I need to contact them because I, I've been emailing them about a new design and I have not heard back from them. So I will definitely try to get some of those up and running. And I mean, my kids have so much of my merch, merch, merchandise. So, um, okay. Back to TikTok. Uh, okay. No, no, no. Even farther back than that. Did you know that they call gossip tea? Like T-E-A, like I'm going to drink some tea, but it actually means like gossip. I had no idea. People kept on asking me like, do you have any tea? And I'm like, no, I only drink coffee. I am so out of the loop of being cool sometimes. It is ridiculous. But there's all sorts of tea slash gossip going on over at TikTok. Now, TikTok is very much a cancel culture, meaning if you do something, they are going to, it just seems like lately they're going to go out of their way to cancel you. And I stay under the radar. I do my thing over there and then I come back over here to YouTube but the person who is now um, under fire is Megan Trainer, And if you don't know who she is, she is a, a singer. And she has that song out called Mother. And um, ba, 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 have my blue jeans on. You know her. You know, you know the song. And um, apparently she was on a podcast. And they were talking about you know, how difficult it is to be a kid and going to school. Because again, there's just so many school shootings going on. And she said um, something really derogatory about teachers. And she said that they were a bully. And then she said, F teachers. And the teachers are not having that. They are all up in arms over um, her statement. And you know what? To me, it's like, I don't know why people say the things they do. You know, teachers have it tough. I, I, I don't think, I mean, I know I couldn't be a teacher because I actually, um, when Robert and Brandon were young and in um, preschool, like the, they were like two and four, I decided to go back to school. I got my my preschool teacher credentials, which surprisingly you only had to go to like two classes at a community college to be able to teach preschool. And I became a preschool teacher and I was teaching, um, I think, two-year-olds. And when you say teaching, it's basically babysitting a whole group of kids. And um, I quickly learned that was not for me. I did not have the temperament. I did not have the patience. Um, and it's really hard taking care of somebody else's kids. And if you're a teacher, regardless as to what age, what however long they're in your class, you're taking care of somebody else's kids. And it's hard. And so I have a lot of respect for teachers. And, you know, like I said, she just said that derogatory thing and they are going after her. And, you know, it's a part of like, if I'm on here and I say something um, against a group of people or a profession or anything like that, you know, 
they would have the right to be like, yeah, you know what? That's not cool. I don't appreciate you saying that. And yes, she apologized, but she apologized because she got caught. You know, she apologized because, you know, all, all the teachers are, are angry at her. And, and I'm not by any means on any sort of same level as she is. But I mean, I still have responsibility in the words that come out of my mouth. And I have every, I mean, truthfully, everybody has responsibility on the words that come out of their mouth, whether you say it out loud or you type it on a keyboard, we all are responsible for the, our words and our actions. Um, Connie says, I have two friends that are teachers. They have tough jobs, but they love what they do. Absolutely. It's a passion. And it's, it, again, with the climate of our culture, it's, it's a difficult it's a difficult time and especially going through the pandemic and being shut down and having to teach remotely. I, again, I have a lot of respect for anybody who gets up and goes to work every day of the week. Um, Linda says, even in Scotland where I live, it is a hard job. One of my son's teachers had a breakdown. So I admire anyone in that job. Absolutely. Connie says I was a teacher in a daycare, but finally decided definitely it was not for me. You and me both girl. I only lasted like six months of that. I couldn't do it. And Linda, yeah, no, it's, you know, I don't know. I, I, again, we as a society, sometimes we are just, we're putting the blame on people that sometimes I don't think deserve the blame. You know, it's like teachers are always the brunt of everything. So, um, but yeah, no, Megan Trainer got in trouble for saying that. And that my friends, is the T on TikTok. And the, here's the thing is, it's like, there's, there's going to always be an unlimited supply of BS that's going on over there. I've been on TikTok now going on three years and the platform has just changed so much. And the, it just seems to be very... Um, gosh, very like, I don't know, there's always drama going on over there. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking about that. Now, another thing that I have been seeing a lot of on TikTok, but is not like the um, controversial part of it is something called slugging. And I don't, it, when I first heard that, I'm like, I'm not going to hit anybody. I'm not going to slug anybody, but that's not what it is. Slugging is when you take like a really heavy lotion or Vaseline and you put it on your face and you sleep with it. And that is what we're going to be talking about for a little bit, because there's all sorts of ways to do this. And it's very interesting. And yes, I got a lot of my information from TikTok. And yes, I should probably be more careful because like I said, you know, I listened about the vitamins and that ended up giving me a stomach ache. So I did a little bit more research on this because I don't want to give anybody a stomach ache. Um, Okay, so now slugging. Slugging is basically where you put this on your face at night and you sleep in it. Um, like this guy's doing right here. So I was like, Vaseline, are you kidding me? I mean, that's like a really thick kind of product. I don't know if I really want to, you know, cake it on my face. It's going to clog my pores. But the way you do it is at night, you wash your face, then you put your moisturizer on, then you take your Vaseline and you put it on over your moisturizer. Now you want to make sure that you don't put it on so thick, like, you know, you have like layers and layers and layers of it, but you do want to put it on over your moisturizer and you sleep in it. And this is supposed to be an amazing overnight um, product for your skin. Now I've also seen when I'm talking about slugging, I've also seen people put this on a little bit thicker and then um, grease. Yeah. You know, you can take like lard and put it on your face. 
But I've seen people put this on their face and then they take saran wrap and they put the saran wrap over their face. You know, they poke holes for their nose and their mouth, but they will really cake it on this time. I mean, they put on a lot. They put the saran wrap over their face. Again, make yourself air holes. Do not put saran wrap over your face without air holes. I'm putting that disclosure out there right now. But you want to put it on, and then you leave that on for 30 minutes. You wipe it off. You wash your face. You moisturize it. And that's like another way to do the slugging. Now, another way that you can use this product, which I am absolutely amazed at, is they're using this as a glow. Because, you know, hey, um, Elf has that whole Halo Glow makeup series that um, you put on the foundation, you put on what what every product they have has a glow to it. And if you don't want to do that, you can actually put your Vaseline on the areas that you want to glow. So I've seen people actually once their makeup, you know, once their face is washed and they have their moisturizer on before they put on their foundation, they're putting a little bit of the Vaseline like on their cheeks, on their area right here where you want your highlighter. They put it down their nose. They put it on their chin. And then they put um, their makeup over the top of that. And it's supposed to give, again, the glow like the halo glow. See how the little glows right there? I do not have Vaseline on right now. I just actually went to the store and I bought this. Um, I know. I'm not sure about that. Vaseline is made from petroleum. It is 100% um, petroleum USP. It's white petroleum. So I'm not too sure if that's different. So let's figure that out. But yeah, Vaseline right now is like all over um, social media as the new, like, like versatile product that you can use. So let's go white petroleum and see what that says. White petroleum. Um, let's see what it says. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. It says here, white petroleum mineral oil or, um, it says this medication is used to as a moisturizer to treat or prevent dry, rough, scaly, itchy skin and minor skin irritations. Um, there goes Indy. And it says it's been around since 1872, more commonly known as Vaseline. It has evolved with relatively um, impure waxy substance to a highly refined product that is known today. And um, it says, is Aquaphor the same as petroleum jelly? Aquaphor is different from the 100% petroleum jelly product. Aquaphor only contains 41% petroleum jelly, but does come with additional ingredients that moisturize the skin. So if you're not really comfortable using like the actual Vaseline, um, you can get something like um, Aquaphor or something like that. But the whole idea behind slugging and the whole idea behind going really like intense with a petroleum jelly is that it is going to give the maximum amount of moisture over the shortest amount of time. So you put it on again, um, over your, you know, on your face at night and you sleep in it and it's supposed to do amazing things. Now, when I went to, I actually just went to the grocery store and I grabbed this. I also grabbed this Nivea cream. I've always been a fan of this product. And so when I saw this right next to this, I'm like, I need to have that because I want to try this also. And this is a rich moisturizing cream for body, face, and hands. Idea for daily use with all intense moisturizing needs. Um, let's see, this is water. This has mineral oil. See, this has petrol, this the petroleum jelly in here also. So if you don't want to use this straight grease on your face, you can get something like this Nivea cream that has this in here. 
but it's not just the petroleum jelly. So it has water, mineral oil, petroleum. Um, it has wax, has lanolin, alcohol, which doesn't sound like that would be great. It has some magnesium. Um, it has all sorts of things, but this one is an intense moisturizer that you could use in the same form and fashion as the petroleum jelly. And so this one is super thick and I do like this one also. So what you would do again, you would wash your face. You would, um, put a real heavy layer on and then you're going to sleep in that because sometimes, and Here's the thing is, it's like sometimes we think like if we want to have a real good skincare routine or if we want to have a real good chance at fighting these um, fine lines and wrinkles that we need to go with these really fancy products. Because like I said on my last live, you know, they have retinol, they have retinol, they have this and they have that. And the, it, it, it gets mind boggling to the point where it's like you don't even know what product is right. You don't even know if you're using the same product twice. So sometimes to me, going back to a little bit more old fashioned way, you can have just as good a benefit. Linda says, I love the smell and um, Nivea reminds me of the holidays as a kid. Yes. And here's the thing. And I remember my grandmother who had beautiful skin until the day she passed away. She used Noxzema and she would sit there every night and put the Noxzema on and just wipe it off. That's all she did. And for many years, I used Noxzema also. And it's something that every once in a while, like if my, every once in a while, I don't know why I stop using it. I guess it's just because I like to try so many new things. But Noxzema is, again, another older product that's been around for a really long time that sometimes just kind of going old school isn't so bad. And um, Vaseline, Nivea, and Noxzema, you know what? Might not be such a bad thing to try. And bananas. Don't forget about bananas because um, that was a really good moisturizer, surprisingly so. And another thing we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be responding to comments, good, bad, or indifferent. I did a video not too long ago responding to all or just some of the content or comments I got off of my Saniderm short that I, um, I did. And that short on YouTube has been seen like almost 4 million times, which is really super cool, except um, people think that I work at Saniderm. They think that I am in the Saniderm complaint department. They, I don't know, it's pretty crazy. Some of the comments I get, they're like complaining to me about the product. And I'm like, sweetheart, you know, I don't work for Saniderm, right? You know, I'm not telling you to use Saniderm. I'm just showing you how I used it. So some of the comments I get are just kind of like over the top. But one of the things that we're going to be doing on a daily basis is I'm going to be responding to some comments. And a lot of them are very positive. A lot of them are questions. And again, some of them are just downright um, weird. And here's the thing. It's, it's like when I do respond to a negative comment, they don't hurt my feelings. You know, you, the way I look at it is any negative comment, the only thing that that does is it reflects on the person who's saying it. And if I was doing any of this for their approval, I would never get out of bed and I would never do another ounce of content because I'm telling you right now, these people um, just leave little bombs of negativity and move on. And I am, I don't know the way I, I always say, I always put it this way for the path that I have led and all the mean things that I used to tell myself, these things that these people are trying to say, it's like, um, I don't know it, it, it they're nowhere near as mean as what I used to tell myself, but let's just move on. Okay, so um, let's see here. Do, do, do. We're talking about a buzz cut, all right? So this was one on one of my videos that I had a buzz, buzz cut. And the um, person who commented said, I so wish I could do this. I do have a, I do have quite a dent from a childhood accident a few inches above my ear. I also don't care for makeup and feel whenever 
I have short hair that I need makeup, which I'm sure is not true. Just my own insecurities. 61 and still worried about what people think. All right, we're going to we're going to break this one down in a couple of different areas. For one, I think scars and wrinkles and um, fine lines, all of that are just, we don't need to hide them. All right. If I, I mean, I have a scar from a lump that I had removed that thankfully was benign and there was nothing wrong with me, but I mean, I have a scar on my chest and I'm okay with that because it is a part of my journey. You know, I, I, I don't hide my wrinkles and I always look at scars and wrinkles and just imperfections like this. All right. I want you to think about um, a lion in the Serengeti. All right. She's a lioness and she's beautiful and she's been um, she's been around for a while. All right. She's seen things. She's caught zebras. She's provided for her cubs and she is beat up. All right. She has one ear is bent. She's only got one tooth left. Her tail is broken. And you can tell she has seen some stuff. All right. So you look at that lioness and you're like, wow, that lioness must be a badass because she's made it this far. And look at how many fights and look at how many obstacles that she's gotten over. I have a lot of respect for that lioness because she's still alive today. We have respect for her. She's beautiful. And yet when it comes to ourselves, when it comes to us and our own imperfections and our broken tails and our bent ears, we get very judgmental. All right. We want to hide it. We want to hide those things. And it's like, why? Why are we hiding our journey from the world? We shouldn't. We should be just as proud of our scars as that lioness is of hers. So when you look at yourself in the mirror and you see something that is not perfection, that says more about you than somebody who is deemed to be perfect. So I think we need to start celebrating these scars and these dents and these wrinkles and these fine lines way more than we have. So that's the first part of that comment. And boy, did I go off on a tangent on that one. But it's it's something that I feel really very strongly about just because, um, again, I think that we are um, we're judged too harshly on not being perfect. Um, scars and wrinkles are what part of that make us unique. Absolutely. Tulip, laugh all out. From now on, I shall sport my broken tail and bent ears with pride. Good. I am very happy about that because I know I, that's the way I, that's the way I look at myself. I look at myself as that scraggly lioness that's seen some stuff and I am okay with that. All right. Another part of her comment was, um, that she felt like if she had super short hair, she needed to wear like big earrings or bold makeup. And I think both big earrings and bold makeup is really, um, oh, Linda, you love the, the lioness analogy? Absolutely. And we just need to appreciate ourselves like that more and more. And I will, this is going to be a subject that is going to be coming up a lot. Um, so makeup and earrings, you know what? I think they look really cool with short hair, but they're definitely not necessary. I think short hair, I didn't wear makeup for a couple of days and I was perfectly fine. You know, it, again, it's our inner dialogue. It's what we tell ourselves. You know what? If you have short hair and you don't want to wear makeup, we just need to be like, wow, you know what? I look really good today. I am a lioness who is not putting on her makeup today because I'm going to let all of my battle wounds show. And you can still be beautiful without makeup. Makeup is just something there that if you want to wear it, then you wear it. And then um, she says, I'm 61 and I'm still worried about what people think. You know what? This is what I think about that. Um, oh, Connie, I'm going to come back to that. Um, here's what I think about worrying about what people think. All right. People are going to judge us regardless. All right. We could walk into a room. We can live our lives conforming to every single 
sort of stereotype that society heaps upon us, all right? We can just check off every single box and people are still going to judge you. They're going to look for something. They're going to judge you for trying to conform. They're going to judge you for checking off those boxes. So just be like, you know what? You're going to judge me anyway. You might as well judge me for me being me and enjoying who I am. And I think if we have more of that concept of like, you know, these people are just going to be jerks regardless as to what I do, then you know what? It, maybe it will give you more freedom to do it because you're not going to change the way that they act and you're not going to change the way that they, they think. The only person that is being hurt in that entire scenario is you because you're we're, we are so trained to worry about what people think that once we let that go, it's actually freeing. And once you stop worrying about that other person, um, your, 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 your confidence, your happiness, your style will just flourish. So that's the way I look at it. You know what? The way I look at it is, you know what? If people aren't going to judge me for my tattoos, um, they, if people don't judge me for my tattoos, they're going to judge me for my hair. If they don't judge me for my hair, they're going to judge me for my outfits. If they don't judge me for my outfits, they're going to judge me by what is coming out of my mouth. You know, people are going to judge me one way or the other. So I might as well just be as bright and bold and as brave as possible. Um, Bryn Peg 7, do you respond to private messages on Instagram? I try to respond to as many messages as possible. Um, sometimes my inbox gets a little overwhelming and, but yes, I do try. If you send me a message on Instagram, I will definitely look for it. Connie says, I got a negative comment on my channel was kind of hurt, but I let it go. Yeah. You know what? And here's the thing is it's like, I always say like, Oh, you know, negative comments don't bother me, but truthfully every once in a while, when does land and it does hurt. And it really depends on where I'm at on that day. If I'm having kind of an insecure day, if I'm having a day where my, um, my, um, if like my self-talk might be a little bit more harsh, if a negative comment comes across right at the right time. Yeah. You know what? Every once in a while they hurt and every once in a while I'm like, wow, you know, that one kind of stung. And then, you know what, I go for a walk or I talk to Robert or Brandon, or I just kind of take that moment to be like, what is it about this comment that upset me? And you know what? And truthfully, it's like, well, you know what? They, they mentioned maybe like my neck wrinkles and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm a little conscientious about those. And they just happen to hit the mark but it doesn't change who I am as a person. So I apologize, Connie, for somebody who would reach out to you and be mean to you. There's absolutely no, no, no rhyme or reason to it. Just know I love you and let those people fly off in the wind. Um, I'm and recover. I'm a recovering people pleaser. Life is too short to worry about what other people think. Absolutely. See, and here's the thing is as a recovering addict, um, we have a hard time saying no. Um, we are normally people pleasers. We don't like conflict. So this has been a real um, kind of new version or a new um, a new kind of thing for me. And I have to tell you, the more I talk to you all about that, the more um, confidence I get. Because I have to tell you, every time I talk to you or I tell you like that lioness story, Inside my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Lonnie, tell them, tell them about that lioness, you know, be brave, you know, don't let people stop you. So as much as, um, as much as you say that you, you benefit from hearing the things I have to say, I benefit from the things I say also. And that is absolutely 100% the truth. So that's going to be kind of a little, um, I would say a little template of what our morning lives are going to be like. Um, again, we are going to talk about those, those subjects, you know, everything from beauty, fashion, tattoos, age, and life. I think that, um, I think that that gives us a big enough platform, kind of a big enough talking points that we can go in 
all sorts of different directions. And um, I 100% love your input. So if you come with, up with an idea that you would like to talk about, 100% leave a comment and we will talk about that. I, I, I mean, just having an open form, I think it's really important. Linda says, yes, I agree. We have to love ourselves first. Self-love is the most important love because once you love yourself, it's easier to love others. Um, again, product reviews. I have a bunch of boxes that we're going to open up and we are going to look at some new products. I'm going to come again with like, what's going on on YouTube? I mean, what is what are people talking about? We'll have more TikTok gossip because, again, that is an endless supply. Um, we'll have beauty tips and um, we'll respond to more comments. And you know what? So, like I said, some of them are nice and some of them are not, but they're going to get responded to. And you know what? A lot of times I respond to negative comments because I like you to see how I respond to negative comments. And um, I'll let you know the ones that kind of hit the mark and I'll let you know the ones that are absolutely just, they can fly away in the wind. But that, my friends was our pilot episode of Gray Hair Can Do Morning Show. And I appreciate each and every single one of you for joining me live. I will not be back until Monday. Um, this is going to be a Monday through Friday show. So I'm not going to be doing my Saturday live anymore just because I want to prepare and make our morning shows as good as possible. So um, with that, I appreciate and love each and every single one of you. I will be back Monday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Times. Remember, be bright, be bold, be brave. Be that lioness. Let your scars show. Take your crooked tail and just kick some behind. I love you all and I will see you. Shannon, thank you so much. Can't wait for the next live you rock. Thank you so much. We will, we, cause you know, we're kind of a team effort here. We will be back on Monday. Love you all.